So please, it's an honor and a privilege to work on this man's staff to help bring truth to our brothers and sisters in Los Angeles and throughout America. Please receive Brother Minister Tony Muhammad, the Western Regional Representative of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due. We thank Almighty God, Allah, the Creator of all things, to the revealer of all truth, to the sender of all the great prophets. We thank Almighty God, Allah, for giving to us Moses and the Old Testament. And we thank him for giving to us Jesus and the New Testament. And we thank him for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. I would be remiss in my duty, however, if I did not thank Almighty God Allah enough. The God who it is written of in Bible prophecy, a God who would, at the end of time, he would go out seeking to save a people who is lost. He would go out seeking to save a people who had been taken from their land into a strange land amongst some terribly strange people. That people in turn, brothers and sisters, would afflict them, as the Bible say, for approximately 400 years. They lost their names. They lost their language. They lost the true knowledge of self and their God. They lost their culture, their folkways, and their mores. They were people, Jeremiah say, who have given up the true and living God and have begun to follow a God that does not profit them. We can find no one befitting a lost and rejected people, a lost people other than the black man and woman here in the hills of North America. But as it is written, God who we know came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. It is written that he would come in sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. We thank him for coming and raising one from among us as it is written in the book of Deuteronomy. For when he find us, he said, from among their brethren, I will raise one up from among them. And I will teach him what to say? That one we believe is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, a Georgia born black man that is misunderstood by some, understood by many. We thank Allah for giving to us the honorable Elijah Muhammad. And in his absence, we thank that same eternal God for giving to us a man who brings us comfort, a man who brings to us proper guidance, a man who brings to us a proper insight into God's wisdom, a man who has been trained to defend the defenseless, a man who, in my humble opinion, I don't know another man on this planet that is as courageous, that is as bold, that is as God Fearing is the man that I want to represent to you today, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In their holy and righteous names, I give you the greetings. One of the forgotten languages of your mothers and fathers, that language is Arabic, and the greeting is Assalamu alaikum. How's everyone feeling today? All praises due to Allah, fill and find myself as um, we try to conquer the wiles of Satan. I want to thank everyone that is here for coming out to hear the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as given to us by his top student, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And as a student of these two men, I am humbled that you would be out today 
to hear this teaching, but I am grateful that Allah has prepared for us many student ministers. And I want to thank all of the student ministers, Minister Vernon Muhammad, who normally opens us up in prayer, Sister Minister Aisha Muhammad, and Minister Charles Muhammad. Would you help me in giving them a round of applause for all of the wonderful words that they spoke? And to those of you who will be watching this particular lecture series via the television, welcome to the Truth Hour, where in this Iowa we will hurl truth at falsehood. We're going to run at falsehood until we catch the lies that have taken from you and I. We are a people who are the naked truth. And there are imposters running around in our garments. And we're going to run after these imposters until we catch them. So as Juvenile, the rap artist, would say, you better run, Forrest. Well, you better run. But today, you can run, but you cannot hide. Again, I want to thank our wonderful brother, a Christian, uh, I think he's a scholar. He's a doctor of divinity. Our brother, Reverend Price. We owe God through him a debt of gratitude for introducing to the world. Reverend Price is backed by a lot of people with money. That's a blessing. And through his television ministry, he has introduced to the world a book that the Caucasians did not really want the black man and woman, brown man and woman, red man and woman, or yellow man and woman ever to pick up. That book is called Message to the Black Man. We thank you, Reverend Price for misquoting and he's misrepresenting the book and I'm going to have to correct him spank him a little bit in a righteous spirit for misquoting the words of the honorable Elijah Muhammad but as he said to those that are his parishioners you must get this book for yourself and don't take Reverend Price's words hook, line and sinker you go get the book and read it in its totality, then you come back and make a critical analysis and compare the book to the Bible and to the Quran. you might just wake up. So we thank him for that, Reverend Price. Give him another round of applause for what he has done. Thank you, sir. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to play with this. We're going to go right at it. But I ask you if it's okay if I take my time. Brother Reverend Price started this. And we thank him and we intend. To finish. it In the right spirit. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is teaching us. That we must close out. This century which has been a century. Of war and bloodshed. We must close it out through dialogue. I'm asking any Christian of any good mind and attitude, those of you who are not afraid to hide behind a bushel basket or a tree or a rock with Jesus, step from behind the rock and the tree and step out with Jesus with us. For as a Muslim, you cannot be a Muslim and not believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus, Reverend Price, and to our Christian community. We just don't believe he came with a religion called Christianity. But we believe in Jesus' words, but not in a religion called Christianity. I want to make that perfectly clear. But we believe that Jesus came with a religion which was to establish 
peace. Peace in Arabic is a word called salam or a word called Islam is another word for peace. So, Reverend Price, and to our Christian brothers and sisters, I will go to any church. I will even walk into any ambush. Because, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, as a Muslim follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan, I fear no evil. None. There is nothing, no scholar, no sheikh, no imam, no potentate can say that will shake us off of the foundation of truth. If we are teaching lies, show us the lie. If you are teaching a lie, let us show you the lie. And if I show you the lie and then accept the truth, it is called submit your will to do God's will. That's what we have to do, my Christian brothers and sisters. No clergy, no preacher, no imam, no minister, no priest, no rabbi. None of us have the right to tell gang members to stop the gang banging in the street unless we stop the gang banging in the spiritual centers of God. Then we, at this point, and in this hour, if any Christian, whether your denomination in Christianity is Baptist, Episcopalian, Protestant, Methodist, it makes no difference. Let's sit down at the table and as religious leaders, let's show the gang members how they can solve their differences. If you are willing to sit down with Minister Farrakhan in the nation of Islam and let us show you what we know to be the truth. And then you can cast and show us what you think is the truth. And we can disagree without being disagreeable. Y'all all right? Now, wow, fired up again. Brothers and sisters, I want to give a backdrop because, you know, some of you, this may be your first time here to hear this series. This is part four. You know, four represents foundation. And what we desire to do is to put your emotion in your pocket. Keep it close, because you know black folks, we have to throw it on every now and then. Rise above emotions into the proper logical thinking of your mind. We're not going to hypnotize you. Neither are we going to brainwash you. Even though your brain needs to be washed, as wicked as some of our thoughts are, we need to be brainwashed. But the backdrop before we begin this part of the series and to our Christian families and those of you who will be watching via television. Reverend Price have presented his analysis of message to the black man and he have said to us that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uses the Bible. He said to us that the Bible is the oldest known source. You go back, either order the lecture series. I'm saying it to the Muslim, to me. I am not the best, no, I am just a student. I follow a man who teaches me, and his name is Farrakhan. I'm just a student. But as a student, I believe that we can deal with most of the scholars of this world as a student. I will only teach what I know. What I don't know, I won't even try to teach. I will be honest and tell you if you show me some. Wow, I, I didn't know that. Let me go to my teacher and get a better understanding. Because I see Minister Farrakhan as my teacher. This is why I welcome 
any invitation. I don't care where it is. We will go. Unlike some who refuses to sit down with us. We have asked Reverend Price time and time, brother, let's sit down. But he refuses. And that's okay. We'll bring him into the mosque in a few minutes. While we're doing this series, brothers and sisters, now, those of us that are Christians and who study the Bible, let me tell you what we believe about the Bible. If you look at what the Muslims believe, at the back of every final call newspaper, this newspaper should go to every home of every black, brown, red, and yellow man. Because in this newspaper, there is not any lies printed. It is the best newspaper to be found anywhere, in my opinion, on this planet. So we ask that you subscribe to this paper. It don't just talk about religious news, but it gives you news from a world perspective from a black opinion. I mean, don't let the LA Times, you know, fool you. But anyway, if you go to point number three in what the Muslims believe, this will lay the basis as we embark on this study. I hope you have today paper and pencil. Don't come here without that. I want you to write down whatever you don't understand or anything that uh, you love hearing, jot that down because we're going to allow you at the end of our series, we're going to open up the door for anyone who want to come in here and ask us questions. You can question me at the end of this series. Unlike Reverend Price, I wish he would let me ask him some questions while his congregation is there. He can come in here and ask me some while you're here. He might just do it. It reads, we believe in the truth of the Bible. We believe in the what? Truth. Of the Bible. But we believe that it has been tampered with. Now listen, don't get emotional. See, because before you get emotional, we can prove that somebody touched it because in the preface of the Bible, someone tell us they tampered with it. We dealt with that in our earlier series, and I'll go back into that. We believe that it has been tampered with and must be reinterpreted so that mankind will not be snared by the falsehoods that have been added to it. Somebody added something to the Bible. Now you're getting upset again. Slow your roll. Let me finish. See, this is what's killing us as a people. Here is a Caucasian who enslaved you for over 300 years. Then turns around and try to be your spiritual teacher. Here's a man that beat the hell out of you for 300 years, wouldn't tell you the truth for 300 years. All of a sudden, you think he's going to tell you the truth. He wouldn't treat you right. What makes you think he's going to teach you right? Now listen, here we go. Y'all ready to take this ride? Reverend Price, you say that the Bible is the oldest known source of God in terms of its writing. No, it is not. These people, some, intentionally lie to their congregation. If you went to theology school, I uh, am a product of Marge Brown College in the Atlanta University Center. In the Atlanta University Center, there is a the theology school. And they teach these cats how to preach in their seminary colleges because in some cases preaching is big business but who are the teachers in these seminary schools 
at ITC in Atlanta, many of the scholars come out of white minds in Europe. Come on, I'm going to prove my point, brothers and sisters. Is the Bible God's words? We believe it's been tampered with. What do you believe? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. New Testament, they only chose four main books, which was the gospel according to Mark, the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to Luke, the gospel according to John. But there were three thousand other books of the New Testament that was not added. I'm going to prove my point. The Bible is not the oldest known books of God. See, this revised standard edition, 1971, is sitting on 17 other books. The Bible that you have is in English. But the original manuscript was not in English. What language was it in? Reverend Bryce and other preachers like you, what is the original manuscript of the Bible? Was all of them found? Are there some left out, Reverend Price? If so, why? What's in those books that they know may say something about Europeans? Oh, man, come on. Reverend Price admitted last week that Jesus did not speak English. Hell, you didn't speak English either until they brought you over here to America. Hey, this is the hardest language in the world to learn. Not for you. You grew up in it. Because one word can mean so many different things. Am I right? He said Jesus spoke ancient Egyptian Aramaic. Go look up the word Aramaic. It is an Arabic dialect. It is one of the Semite languages. The Semite languages stems from Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic. They are all relatives. Jesus didn't go around talking about, what's up, hi. Hi, y'all. He didn't know nothing about English. It wasn't even around then. I'll show you a little bit later. But go back and get the series, and I explain these books. Brothers and sisters, and to the clergy, at the same time that the Caucasians in Europe, all of this, all of this changing took place in Europe. The Africans never touched the original manuscripts. King James is a white man. Do you believe King James will tell you the truth? You don't even know nothing about King James. I mean, no wonder homosexuality is gaining strength in the church. I'm going to the nation because they got them menses. You better study King James. Something about him ain't right. At the time, they was mutilating the Bible in 1582. You was being brought to America as a slave. These same white folks that you give credit to, I just go by my King James Version. They was just beginning to come out of the dark ages. They didn't even get knowledgeable or civilized until the Moors went into Europe and civilized the white man by taking in 
Islam. And I'm going to show you on the course of study where one of the popes had accepted Islam. Show you in a few days. Reverend Price, you started this. Look. In your Bible. The revised 1971 edition. If you would just go in your Bible and stop going by it. Read the preface. You're going to be a Christian and use the Bible to argue with us. You better make sure it's perfect book. Because Reverend Price is charging the honorable boy Elijah Muhammad with being an author of confusion. No, no, no. We're going to charge him and the Christian scholars with being the author of the confusion of the Bible. This book has contradictions in it. I'm going to show you some more today. Get the series. You'll see where we showed contradictions. Where two different books talking about the same incident give us two different accounts. We just want to know who should we believe. Y'all all right? Let's read this preface. Preface. Say preface. I ain't going to ask you what it means. We just talk. We don't never look up words. Listen at what the scholars say themselves. This, the first two words should have been a hint to you that the book been tampered with. They say, the revised standard version. The what? What does revised mean? I mean, they just boldly tell you the changed version. Okay, I know that ain't enough for you. I mean, coming out of slavery, they told us that this book was perfect. We hold on tighter to this than anything. This is why it's so hard for us to believe that, that they don't believe. <laughs> Can't be nothing wrong with the book. The Revised Standard Version of the Bible is an authorized revision of the American Standard Version, published in 1901, which was a revision of the King James Version, published 1611. The first English version of the scriptures made by direct translation from the original Hebrew and Greek of the scriptures I mean and the first to be printed was the work of William Tyndale now remember William Tyndale this is the original manuscript one two three four five six seven there were seven books before Tyndale's book. This is the original. This is, this is the Bible in its pure form. If you really knew this, you would really get spiritually high. But they stepped on it. Yeah, they put a six on it. They, cut, they put a cut on it. Dope dealers know what I'm talking about. Oh, y'all, anybody that snorted cocaine, you know if it was raw. Because you know the Peruvian flakes is sort of, they're not even white. I'm giving myself up too, huh? See, that's why Farrakhan got me, boy. Out there dealing dope. I mean, look, Allah takes a dope dealer like myself and give us truth. And we babies in it. And that's why I said, ain't it beautiful that God don't get these truths to the wise and proof. But they say that the nation of babies, you're right. But look at what a baby can do. But, you know, Tyndale was charged by the Roman Catholic Church of mutilating the Bible and they killed him for it. He was murdered. He met bitter opposition. He was accused of willfully perverting the meanings of the scriptures. 
and the New Testament were ordered to be burned as untrue translations. He was finally betrayed into the hands of his enemies and in October of 1536 was publicly executed and burned at the stake. Yet Tyndale work became the foundation of subsequent English version, notably those of Coverdale, he's up there, 1535, and Thomas Matthews of 1537, the Great Bible of 1539, and the Geneva Bible, the Great Bible, the Geneva Bible, the Matthews Bible, which one is authentic? In 1560s, the Bishop's Bible, 1558. In 1582, a translation of the New Testament made from the Latin Borget by Roman Catholic scholars was published at Rennes. The translators who made the King James Version took into account all of these preceding versions and comparison shows that it owes something to each of them goes on. The King James Version had to compare with the Geneva Bible in popular use, but in the end it prevailed over the Geneva Bible. And for more than two and a half centuries, no other authorized translation of the Bible into English was made. The King James Version became the authorized version of the English speaking people. The King James Version has with good reasons been termed the noblest monument of the English prose. It entered as no other book has into the making of the personal character and the public institution of English speaking people. Listen at them now, the, the scholars, they say, yet the King James Version have grave defects. This is in the Bible. It have grave what? It's not Tony Muhammad. This is in the Bible. It's in the preface. If you don't like that part, tear it out. White folks know what they did with the book. I know it hurts. You can close your ears to that if you want to. And enter into hell. A reason with us today and say, wow. Again, it's truths in the book. The Bible can make you free. But you can't read it with a slave mentality. You can't read it with the slave master's understanding. You got a mind. You got a brain. Just stop thinking like a slave. Because the same book that can free you can enslave you if you let some crackers interpret it to you. We need our own scholars. What's wrong with our scholars? Yet, the King James Version have great defects. By the middle of the 19th century, the development of biblical studies and the discovery of many manuscripts more ancient than those upon which the King James Version was based made it manifest that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for another revision. That's what Elijah said. He said, we believe in the truths of the Bible, but believe that they have been tampered with and needs to be reinterpreted. The problem is, black people, God is going to touch one from among you. And give him an understanding of the interpretation. Will you be like the people in Jesus' day when he went to his own and his own received him not? 
He shined light into the darkness of Negroes and niggers and coons, but they could not comprehend his knowledge and wisdom. But now Farrakhan, who even break it down even better, give you another understanding. He almost make it impossible for you to reject him. You just have to make a decision. I'm going to continue to follow lies and to hell with the truth. You make the decision. Now, you might get mad and maybe some Mexicans listening. But the Catholics, the white folks out of Spain gave you the book. But did they treat you right? They captured your people. Mutilated your heroes and then tell you to pray for your enemies. Ah. That's in your body. Y'all all right? I want to show you the top scholar of the Seven day Adventist church admits the same thing. Let me read it. Her name is Miss Ellen G. White. She is called the prophetess of the Seven day Adventist church. They believe this woman. Well, why don't you read her preface? Listen at her. Miss Ella G. White, a prophetess of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, in her Bible Commentary, Volume 1, page 14, has this confession to make about the fallibility of the Holy Bible. Y'all all right? She says, the Bible we read today is the work of many copyists who have in most instances done their work with marvelous accuracy. What, what kind of work they done with marvelous accuracy? Lie? Deceive with marvelous accuracy? But copyists have been infallible. This is her word. And God most evidently has not seen fit to preserve them altogether from error. From error in transcribing this book. Oh, y'all look like you're hurt. It will be all right when the swelling go down. We're not saying this. These people who tamper with it is talking to you. She says, yet yeah. when um, copies of it were few, she's talking. Learned men had in some instances changed the words. Now, if they know the words, show us where they changed. Which, which words? If they changed it, Miss White, which words? So that we won't be snared by those holes, Elijah say. Which words? Why don't they tell you which words? Here you are, up from slavery, given a book. Didn't even know how to read and still don't know how to read and comprehend. We are the worst group of people when it comes to reading and comprehension. When they give your baby the SAT test, you can read a whole paragraph and somebody can stop you and say, well, give me its meaning. You got to start reading again. We are the worst group of people when it comes to reading and comprehension. We need somebody that's going to help us, man. Here we are 
they blind people, man. Who going to lead the blind? Everybody got a prophet and a messenger. Anybody that went into bondage, a prophet or a messenger came. Where are your prophets? Where is our messenger? Where is ours, man? Now, man, look, the truth. If God is the God of all and he is, that means he changes not. If you can send to the children of Israel a messenger and a prophet, where is the black man's messenger? You help Sodom and Gomorrah and you got Lot's family. Where is ours? You got Daniel and the Hebrew boys out of the lion's den when a man was trying to change their name, but ours got changed. Where is our prophet, Reverend Price? Where is our messenger? And don't tell me that it's just Muhammad of Arabia. He's not alive. Them Arabs try to make us Arabs. I don't want to be no damn Arab. I want to be an original black man. Farrakhan is a man who is suffering and being evil spoken of for what he teach. Ain't nobody evil speaking of you, Reverend Price, because you are teaching the king's religion. You're teaching a white man's religion. Christianity is the white man's religion. Jesus never said Christianity is his religion. Read the book of John, chapter 14, verse 27. The closest Jesus come to saying he had a religion is when he said, this day I leave with you peace as the way. Peace in Arabic is Islam. This day I leave with you Islam as the way. If you went to Arab speaking people, it's all a matter of what language you speak. Y'all all right? Don't be scared. I'm going to calm down. Listen, she goes on to say, thinking that they were making it plain. She, now, let me back up. She said, yet, when some copies of it were few, learned men had in some instances changed the words, thinking that they were making it plain when in reality, they were mystifying the book. See, in Greek now, in Greek, the Greeks had a lot of gods. Did they add some of their gods into the book, Reverend Price? The god of Titan, Thor, what was Poseidon, and Zeus, and Jesus, and Uh, platoon and Neptune. Did they add some of them in there, Reverend Price? She said, what did she say? Some men thought they was making it plain, but they were mystifying the book. Is it Greek mythology in the book? The 32 scholars who changed it told you that there's so many errors. So many defects that it needs revision. We ain't trying to revise it for no niggas. We want to make it for us to our advantage. She, she says that too. Mystifying that which was plain by causing it to lean. By causing it to. Like you see the boys in the hood and they cause. What do they be doing? Leaning. So they won't get a head shot. You no, know, keep their head between that bar. Can't get no head shot on. Causing it to lean to their established views. Whose established views? White folks? 
what was the established views in 1582? What were the established views in 1881? This same king had sent out a group called the Christian Crusaders into Africa to kill everything black, men, women, and children. Y'all all right? Last one. The scholars of the Jehovah Witnesses confess. You really have to be careful about them. They can come and tell you, but they can't listen to nothing you say. Can I share some words with you today? Can I share some? Uh, 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 I don't want that. Uh, 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 uh. Running. They want me to take the asleep magazine, I mean the awake magazine. But they don't they won't take the paper that'll really wake them up. Because the white man told them, don't listen to nobody. When they start teaching it, go get a wiser one. They done stop coming to my house. I done wore out the wise ones. We don't even get past the preface of their own book. Don't even take me into the book. We got to get past this preface. Where this is your admission, Jehovah Witnesses, scholars. Now, in their newly revised books, they took this out of their prefaces. But if you go get the oldest known sources, it's still in there. Since Reverend Price said, you got to get the oldest known sources. And he don't have the oldest known sources. So they, they write this. Excuse me. In copying... The inspired originals. Now, this is on page five of their foreword. The mention, uh, this is their confession. It's on page five of the Jehovah Witnesses foreword. In copying the inspired originals by hand, the element of human frailty entered. And so none of the thousands of copies extent today in the original language are perfectly duplicated. Now they said the many thousands of copies in its original form. They don't even have all the books in the Bible. There's thousands of books and they only give you in one book 66 and in another one, 73. But it was thousands of books. I wonder what's in them other books. And guess where they got them hidden? In London. In the libraries of Great Britain. She is talked about in the book of Revelation as the lion. She is talked about in Revelation as baby London, baby Lord, Babylon. Because it was Great Britain, it was London that gave to America who in the Bible was the mystery Babylon. But we know who America is today. She is the Babylon of Revelation. But who gave her power? Her mother, London. And her shield have two lions on each side of the crest biting at the black man's head. Look. Hmm. And so none of the thousands of copies today are in their original language. Are perfectly duplicated. Listen. 
he goes on, the Jehovah Witnesses goes on to say, the result is that no two copies are exactly alike. <clears throat> hey man, I ain't get to speak today. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Ooh, I don't know where that came from. I just playing, I just playing. In their forward, they end, they end with this. The evidence is therefore that the original text of the Christian Greek scriptures has been tampered with. Didn't Elijah say that? That is the Jehovah Witnesses. But listen at Miss White. She makes an asinine statement here. Like many Christians, when truth comes, you, 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 now you're going into deceptive intelligence to rationalize still believing in that mess. You go in your mind and find something. No, see, what had happened, see, was well, that uh, first, you weren't even there. She says, truly the Bible is infallible word of God. She said, yes, it is adulterated, but pure. See how white folks will tell the truth and lie in the same breath? Yeah, y'all going to heaven, but after y'all die. That's why so many black people can't wait. You don't want to party till you get to heaven. Oh, when I get to hell, I'm going to put on my white robe. And I'm going to walk all over God's heaven. Oh, step and fetch, Negro. You won't put on a white robe on earth. You walking around in them tight spandexes, but singing that you'll put on a white robe in heaven. Hell, whatever you do on earth is what you're going to do in heaven. Damn temptress. You'll get to heaven and try to tempt God with that mess. Close your damn legs. Listen at her. Yes, it's adulterated, but pure. It is human, yet divine. Yes, the master. Yes, it show sure wheels. Okay, I'll go back and tell the moves on that. It's adulterated, but it's pure. Come on, man. It's like getting a woman. You know, you looking for a virgin, and she said, Look, I have had sex with a man, but I'm a virgin. In fact, I've had sex with quite a few. But I'm a virgin. It's like a man warning you and say, look, I'm a pimp, but I'm a right kind of pimp. I ain't gonna pimp nobody but you. See, they want you to remain stupid. But Farrakhan is giving us wisdom, man, that we now can differentiate between lie and truth. Because we have a lesson that says, why do we run Yakub and his made devils from the root of civilization? We ran them, Reverend Price, from the root of civilization for telling lies. Because a lie will cause us to fight and kill one another. 
We don't want no lie. We want unadulterated truth. The Bible have truth in it, but somebody done tampered with it. We want to pick up today where we left off. Now can we now go? I want to delay the base. Reverend Bryce is angry. He wanted the TV is sweating. He want to say something so bad. Now, brothers and sisters who are watching this by TV, if you think that this is a good lesson, you don't have to be no Muslim. You can, if you want to be a Christian, that's fine. But just be a Christian who know the truth. Except that the Bible has been tampered with and pray to God that he bless you with an understanding so that you won't be snared by some of the things that's been added to and taken out. He may just even bless you. But tell the truth. Be right by the book. It has been touched. It has. See, I ain't got a problem. But I got a problem when you go and say, ain't nobody never touched it. Wake up. It's been touched. So if you like what we're doing, if you like this series, why don't you send a kind contribution so that we can continue this TV ministry? Those who are watching via television, put your hand on the TV screen. No, don't you do that. Don't put your, don't put your hand on that TV. We can't blame no blessings. We can bring teachings that'll give you a blessing. Man, I mean, these cats be playing game, man. Send me a dollar, I'll send you one of my handkerchiefs. And in it is a blessing. Now, look, I'm going to tell you like Parliament Funkadelic's text. Lay your ears on the TV. And let the truth flow through. Huh? See, because truth not only moves, but it can remove lies. You dig? But in truth, now in truth, we need your help. You've been sending money to them cats that tell lies. Send a kind contribution to Muhammad's Mars number 27. Send a love offering. Send us a love offering. 8713 South Vermont Avenue. Zip code 90044. And I promise you the truth will roll on. Thank you. A little commercial. A little commercial. Now. I like that commercial too. Send your content. Now, I was. We will not send your money to God. We got a mortgage. We got light bills. We got gas. We tell the truth what we do with your money. We will build schools. We will build hospitals. We will build businesses. We will help the black farmers. We will feed you at an inexpensive cost. Love is down me. Feed my sheep. We're not talking about no physical food. We're talking about a mental and spiritual food. We want to bring Reverend Price in. We hear Reverend Price is reading from Message to the Black Man. And he is reading something that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote in that beautiful and wonderful book. And I'm going to let Reverend Price tell you what he read and how he understands it then we would defend it based on what we believe. Could you roll the tape? Where Mr. Elijah Muhammad claimed to be with Allah in the beginning. But Jesus said, or the Bible says that Jesus was with, with the Father in the beginning. So if Jesus was with God in the beginning, 
and Mr. Elijah Muhammad didn't come along until 1,930 years later, it would seem to me reasonably reasonable to believe that whoever was with God in the beginning ought to know who God is and who God ain't. And somebody that's never been with him, how can they know and they were never with him? And the one that was with him said, God is a spirit. And Mr. Muhammad said, God is a man. Hey. All I say is, you know, whatever you whatever you want to believe, but stop. It says something to me. You have to get last week's tape. Jesus didn't just say God is a spirit. He said God is a spirit and those who worship him should worship him in spirit and in truth. And the truth proven by the Old Testament and even by Jesus that God has always been a man. Now I'm going to give you some scriptures. I'm not going to go in them. I'm going to give them to you. You go study them. One of the most powerful is the book of First Timothy. All right. In the book of First Timothy, if you will go. The book of First Timothy, I think it's chapter three. Is it three? Verse 16. Read there. If you go to the book of Habakkuk, three and three, read there. If you go to the book of Genesis, five and twenty-two, five and twenty-four, six and three, all Genesis, eighteen, one through eight, thirty-two and thirty. Exodus 33 and 11, Exodus 15 and 3, Deuteronomy 34 and 10, Isaiah 42 and 13. If you go there and read it for yourself, it plainly tells you there that God is a man. He's not just a man. He is a man with a spirit. All right. So Timothy says that God was manifest in the flesh. And justified in the spirit. Now. Reverend Price also said. You should believe more. Of the man who was with the God in the beginning. Not me. Not based on who, the, what happened to this Bible. I want to believe the one who was with him last. Not the one that was with him in the beginning. Who's the last man to say he was with God? Now, the last one that was with him was given the correction of those who mutilated the book. Roll the tape. Roll the tape. All right. Now, on page number 10, Mr. Muhammad tells us under the heading, I quote, Allah is God, colon, the coming of the Son of Man, the great Mahdi. M-A-H-D-I, the great Mahdi, colon, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Stop. Matthew Stop. 24, 27. Stop it. Right this now. is Mr. Mahat. Stop it. Look. Now, now, Did he say the son of spirit? Who's coming? The son of who? No, the son of spirit is coming. No, the son of a man? See, again, these are one of these contradictions that you say God is a spirit, but then you say the son of man is going to come. If he's just a spirit, it would be the son of spirit coming. How many of you have seen a spirit without seeing a person with a spirit? Tell that lie. I seen a spirit 
where was it? On Normandy and Florence? Run the tape. Not the Quran, the Bible. You must forget about ever seeing, oh, watch this now. This watch is this Mr. Muhammad. Now. We want to find out, is he the prophet? Or is he the prophet? Or I be the prophet? I said I be the prophet. But he said he be the prophet. And he said he be the prophet. Now, how are we going to know which one be the prophet? Hmm. All right, now watch this now. Let me go back and quote this again. On page number 10, in Message to the Black Man, Mr. Muhammad tells us under the heading, quote, Allah is God, colon, the coming of the Son of Man, the great Mahdi, colon. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 27. Mr. Muhammad is quoting the Bible. He goes on to say, you must forget. Say forget. forget. Say forget. Now, this, this is heavy. Say, forget. forget. Mr. Muhammad says, you must forget he forgot, huh? about ever seeing the return of Jesus, who was here 2,000 years ago. Set your heart on Listen. seeing the one that he prophesied would come at the end of the present world's time, and in brackets, the white race's time. He is called the Son of Man, the Christ, the Comforter. He goes on to say, you are really foolish to be looking to see the return of the prophet Jesus. That's the trick, yeah. It is the same as looking for the return of Abraham, Moses, and Muhammad. All of these prophets prophesied the coming of Allah or one with equal power under many names. You must remember that Jesus could not have been referring to himself as returning to the people in the last days. End of quote. It's not the end of quote. That's now he want to end it, but it's cool. It's cool. Mr. Muhammad says that. Fine. I don't have a problem with that if, if he can support it. But don't tell me something you can't support. We gonna support. Because again now, if Allah and Jehovah are the same God manifesting themselves through the Quran and the Bible, they got to say the same thing or God is in conflict with himself. If he's confused, I'm sure enough confused. Stop it right there. You show sure confused, partner. I'm going to let him continue. He said... He, ain't got, he don't have a problem believing if we could back it up. We're going to do that. But he goes on to say here, they are disciples of Jesus and of God. Shouldn't disciples say the same thing? I want to show you something where two disciples don't say the same thing about Jesus' lineage. Y'all all right? I've shown you other contradictions. You got to get those tapes. You are in school. So go back and get your other lessons. We have to roll on. But I'm going to show you one that I think is critical and very serious. In the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, only two of the disciples talks about the genealogy of Jesus. What does genealogy mean? Because I know I'm talking to boys and sisters in the hood. It's like his family tree. It's like going back to uh, your roots. Now, if Jesus came directly from God, how will he have a genealogy? His genealogy should be straight God, Mary, Jesus. Right? That ain't what the book said. If God begot a son, that means God and Mary had something going on. But God ain't do that. God didn't have sex with Mary, and the genealogy proves it. The book of Romans. Book of what? You 
go to the book of Romans. Chapter 1. What chapter? Verse 3. Reverend Price, we may need your help here. Or any other Christian clergy, invite me to your home or to your congregation. And let's do this. Verse 3 reads, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. And declared to be the son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The seed of David according to the what? The seed of who? Wait, wait. Is he the seed of God or the seed of David? I'm asking. I know you know. Y'all been coming to class. Hey, you talking about? Will somebody call me and tell me, is Jesus the seed of God according to the flesh? Or is he the seed of God According to David. Let's go to this chart right here. This one. I want the cameras to focus in on this chart. Matthew and Luke are the only two disciples that even give a genealogy. Both of them start with David and end up with Joseph. But in the middle, they never talk about the same granddaddy's name. Y'all all right? Matthews chapter 1, verse 6 through 16. Matthew says that Jesus only have 26 people in his genealogy line or ancestry line or root lineage. But Luke say in Luke 3, 23 and 31, Reverend Price, Luke say he's got 41 people. In his genealogy line. Does he have 26? Or do he have 41? Starts with David. End up with Joseph. But listen at the other name. Solomon. Robium. Abia. Asa. Josephat. Joram. Osiris. Jotham. Achan. Ektes. Menes. Amon. Joshua. And then you go over here, you don't see none of those names as here, here. Nathan. Matha, Mina, Malia, Elohim, Jonan, Joseph, Judah, Simeon, Levi, Matthew, Joran. No, no two same names, even in his ancestry line. Which one of these cats are lying? Come on, Christians. Who's lying here? You ask Farrakhan to answer you. He's giving you the answers through me. This is what we study. Tell us who. They only claim David in the beginning and Joseph. I wonder why Joseph. They done put Joseph in the genealogy. That means some came out of Joseph into Mary. You know, the Bible say, and the spirit came up on her. I mean, upon her. Upon her. The spirit came upon her. If you put a little distance between these words, it'll be up on Come on, girl, let me get up on this. Huh? The Quran corrects this. What the Quran says, we will send Mary our spirit in the form of a well-made man. He will be a man with a spirit and will impregnate her. They don't want to tell you it's Joseph because Joseph and Mary broke the Judeo law. 
And the Bible tells you that Joseph was espoused with Mary, but the father Mary rejected Joseph. We'll get with that at another time. In another space. Who's telling the truth, Reverend Price? Help me. Invite me to the faith. Faith don't. Faith don't. Roll the tape. All right, now, watch this now. Listen to this. Mr. Muhammad says, and I quote again, you must forget about ever seeing the return of Jesus, who was here 2,000 years ago. You must remember that Jesus could not have been referring to himself as returning to the people in the last day. End of quote. Now, these statements are almost beyond belief in the light of Bible statements to the contrary. For instance, John chapter 14. Let's go to John let's, chapter 14. Let's go with him, y'all. See, all I'm, all I'm interested in is that whatever decision you make, whomever you decide to follow, just be sure you got all the relevant information. That's all I'm trying to get you. To be sure that you know, because I know you don't know this. Most Muslims don't know this. You don't know this. Y'all now, after I give you all this information and you check it all out with this. the Bible, the Quran and the Hadith, and then you decide to go with Islam, fine with me. I don't have no problem with that at all. But I want to be sure you know what you're doing. I know you are you, you moving out of you're moving. Uh, many, many, many blacks have been moving out of emotion. They have been moving out of a sense of betrayal because of the white church in America practicing its racism down through the years. But I told you before, Christianity is not Christians. Any more than Islam is Muslim. Islam is Muhammad and Christianity is Jesus. And until you find. No, 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 no. That's according to him. Jesus never said these statements. Now, back, but he won't back that up. The first time the followers of Jesus was even given the name Christian was 44 years after the death of Jesus at Antioch. Jesus never even heard the word. Run it. Jesus and prove him to be a false prophet. You better be careful before you make a move. Just be sure that you know what you're doing. See, I already know this. I've already checked it out, but I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm going to give you the information and let you draw your own conclusions. That's the only fair way to do it. So that way I'm not coloring the issue. Give you these facts. I know some of you didn't know these facts. Kind of arrogant. Some of you didn't even know there was such a book as Message to the Black Man in America. How many of you never heard of that book before? Raise your hand, way up high, way up high. Wave your hand like that. See? You didn't, you didn't even know it existed, see? So if you didn't know it existed, you couldn't know its contents. All right, John you. 14. Thank this you. This is Reverend Jesus Christ. himself. Listen, he says in chapter 14 and verse one. Now, let me go back and read what Mr. Muhammad said. He said, you must forget about ever seeing the return of Jesus who was here 2000 years ago. So what he's saying is that the Jesus that was here 2000 years ago, forget about ever seeing him again. He's not coming back. That's what he's telling us. Okay, fine. But now. Whose report will you believe? Uh, Wait, are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the report of a man that came 1,930 years after Jesus? Or are you going to believe what Jesus said about himself? And tell me who should have the most accurate information, the person themselves or somebody that lived 1,930 years after they lived. Give it a rest. Give it a rest. All right, watch it. John 14, verse 1. Jesus is himself is speaking let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you Uh oh catch this now verse three and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself now who ought to know more about themselves 
somebody that lived 1930 years after them or the person themselves. Stop. Come on. I wish he would finish. But that's okay. I'll do it for you. Same book. Same chapter. Stay on that channel. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Jesus spoke of one coming after him. And he did. Reverend Price, if you would have continued reading in that same chapter. Now, it may be confusing. This is why we're saying, man, somebody got to keep saying the consistent words. But listen at Jesus's words. If you go to verse 12. Verse what? Same book. 12 through 21. Then we're going to take you to 26 through 31. Jesus talking here, Reverend Price. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Who is this he? And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my father. Oh, I thought you were the father. No, let's finish. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do. That the father may be glorified in the son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Listen, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Give you a what? Another comforter. That he, not me, that he, not me, Reverend Price, that he, Jesus talking about another he, another comfort, that he may abide with you forever. I thought Jesus was going to abide with us forever. I'm going to read that again. And I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Not the same comforter. He shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while. Check him out. Verse 19. And the world seeth me no more. And the world seeth me no more, Reverend Price. He ain't finished. Same chapter, same book. He stopped reading. Verse 20. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you. Whatever that means. See, he said, I'm in the father and you are in me and I'm in you. That's how I've been coming. I came from my father. I got to pass my spirit on like my father passed his. I mean, the truth be told, there's an untruth, and many of the Christian scholars are creeping up on that Jesus had wives. And we'll deal with that at another time. He says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Verse 26 of the same chapter, Reverend Price. Jesus is speaking here. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Not me. He shall teach you all things 
and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. 27. Peace I leave you with. May my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. He goes on to say. Ye have heard how I said unto you. I go away. And come again unto you. If ye love me. Ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. He said earlier that him and the Father were equal. Jesus is saying the Father is greater than me. He says, and now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe. Hereafter, hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. Let's go to chapter 15, verse 26, Reverend Price. Jesus again saying, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. See, this one coming at the end is going to testify of Jesus. He's going to come and say, I am the long-awaited Messiah of the Christian world and Mahdi of the Muslim world. We ask the question, who came making that claim? We say to you, it was Master Farad Muhammad. And today, they don't even know where he is. He came to America as Matthew said he would be in the heart of the world for three and a half days. He taught Elijah for three and a half years and left America and told Elijah, I've given you enough. And he left. Many people were saying, here's a man, if he came to teach us wrong and came to take money from us, why would he teach Elijah and leave? He would have stayed around to get the money. They got all the bank accounts of the nation of Islam. The government had been snooping in our accounts. They would have known if Elijah had sent some money somewhere. But Jesus talking again, and I'm going to close with this. Jesus speak of his leaving and the coming of a comforter. That's how it headlines in my Bible. But these things I have told you, that when the time shall come, you might remember that I told you of them, and these things I said unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. None of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That's Jesus speaking. He goes on in 16, chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but for whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. And he shall glorify me. And he shall receive of mine. Reverend Price, that's Jesus talking in that same chapter, chapter 14, 15, and 16. That's where the honorable boy Elijah Muhammad Prove that Jesus is talking about one coming at the end. Matthews tell us which direction he's coming from. As lightning shineth from the east. All the prophets came up out of the east. Even unto the west. So shall the coming of the son of man be. This is what the honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching us. You got to know the truth of the Bible. 
for the Bible, Reverend Price, have been tampered with. If it haven't been tampered with, Reverend Price, and any other preacher, prove to us that these scholars are lying. Who told us they tampered with? Is the Bible the word of God or the word of some scholars? Last illustration. If the Bible is, is this my God? If the Bible is the word of God from Schofield to the Holy Bible even to Reverend Price's Bible that he copyrighted. Yeah, he copy, He got one. I have it. It's called the Ever Increasing Faith Study Bible. This is Reverend Price's copyrighted Bible. I want to teach you something that they taught him in theology school that he don't teach. Y'all all right? Yeah. If the Bible is the word of God, why does each chapter in the Old and New Testament tell us who the authors are? I thought it was from God. We don't have a problem if it came from men because we believe that the revealed word can come through a man who's submitting his will to do God's will. God will cause his mind to think in his hand to write. See? But if the Bible have been tampered with and mutilated, how they say it's grave what's in the Bible? Grave defects, right? They say it's so many, it needs to be reinterpreted. Now, here's a chart that if the Bible is the word of God, these are books called the Bible. The first five books, Reverend Price, the Christians say they are the five books of Moses. Did Moses write them? Did God give them to Moses? You read in the first five books. There are over 700 places. If you read it, right. That's a third person talking. It's third person. One part of the Bible is talking like this. And Moses went to God and God said to Moses. Well, if Moses wrote it, he would have said, and I, Moses, went to God and God told me. If God wrote it, God would say, I called Moses and I told Moses this. But it's saying Moses went to God and God, that's somebody looking at him. Yeah. Moses went to God and God said to Moses, Cub told Cub, he going to get that Cub. <laughs> if it's God talking, he uses I. If it's his prophets talking, he said, I, the prophet, went to God. But the first five books is talking, somebody else is doing the looking. Y'all all right? And in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses wrote his own death. His own obituary. But check this out. In Reverend Price's Bible. And other ones like his. Even his Bible admits. When it comes to the books. There are about 14 books. Like Genesis. It says Arthur. One of the five books of Moses. Exodus. Arthur. Generally. Generally credited to Moses. Wait a minute. Generally credited to Moses. What do you mean generally? Is it Moses' book or is it generally his book? Who credited to Moses? It's right in the beginning. Before you go in the Bible, read the authenticity of the book. See who the authors of them are. Some You're going to creep up on some. Let's keep going. 
the book of Leviticus, Arthur, generally credited to Moses. Meaning not all of it is credited to Moses. Numbers, Arthur, generally credited to Moses. Deuteronomy, Arthur, generally credited to Moses. Joshua, Arthur, major part credited to Joshua. Who wrote the rest of it? Major part of it credited to Joshua. Well, who wrote, well, which part ain't credited to him? Because I don't want that part. Is that a part, 32 scholars, of the grave defects? Judges, Arthur, possibly Samuel. It's right in your Bible, and you're talking about Farrakhan, man. That man lead us into absolute truth. You either accept it or reject it. Look, look. We can't make you convert to Islam. You just accept it or reject it. Our job is to give you the plain truth. You can reject it, fine. See ya. But you can't say nobody never told you. You came in here one way, but you're going to leave out of here different today. You're going to be drunk. Oh. Oh. Every time you read the Bible, this lecture going to be on your mind. We're doing some brainwashing today. All right, I got to get out of here. The book of Ruth, y'all ready? Ruth, Arthur, not definitely known. Perhaps Samuel. But it's a holy Bible. Look, go home, look in that Bible you stole from the hotel that you were sending in. Now check this one out. First Samuel, Arthur, unknown. I don't even know if I want that book. The author could be Satan. You know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I know who the author of that one is, Reverend Price. I mean, he can claim it. You don't know if he ain't. Reverend Price, who's author, Samuel? Now, 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 Minister Tony, now, you weren't supposed to go that seat. Second Samuel, Arthur, unknown. First King, Arthur, unknown. Second King, Arthur, unknown. First Chronicle, Arthur, unknown. Probably collected and edited by Ezra. Second Chronicle, Arthur, likely collected and edited by Ezra. The book of Ezra. Now here's Ezra, got his own book. Ezra, Arthur, probably, <laughs> good God Almighty, probably written and edited by Ezra. Hell, they don't even know if Ezra wrote his own book. Damn. Damn. Now, now, who's the author of this confusion? Those 32 scholars? Or did God do this intentionally to throw you off? You know what? In truth, if it's God's book, the author should have just been God. But let's go on. I got to drive this home. So when you reject this truth, you go straight to hell. Esther, Arthur, unknown. She creeped in there. I'm tired of all these men that's having a book. Job, man, and I love the book of Job. I mean, that, that book just, that's my book. <laughs> but I don't know. 
Job, Arthur, unknown. David the psalmist. It's supposed to be his psalms, don't it? <laughs> David the psalmist. Arthur. Principally, David. Though there are other writers. Who are the other writers? Guess what? You know who one of the other writers were? I'll show you next week. And he put his name in the book of Psalms. He was a white boy by the name of Shakespeare, Reverend Price. And I'll show you how Shakespeare coded his name in the book of Psalms. Ecclesiastes. Arthur. Doubtful. But commonly assigned to Solomon. Am. Doubtful. But commonly assigned to Solomon. Now. Help me with this. Doubtful but. Doubtful but. Here white folks admitting doubtful. <laughs> but we all vote. Simon did it. Hell, let's take a vote in here today. And we're going to rename this one. How many of you believe that Solomon is the author of the book of Ecclesiastes? We're going to change. We're having a conference. This is a Christian Bible change conference. Who all believe Reverend Price is the author of this book? All right, we'll give it to him. By show of hand, look like. Okay, book of Ecclesiastes, we're changing this part. Arthur, Reverend Price. Isaiah, Arthur, mainly credited to Isaiah. Parts may have been written by others. Jonah, Arthur, unknown. Habakkuk, Arthur, nothing known of the place or time of his birth. May Allah bless you with the light of understanding as I greet you in peace. As-salamu alaykum. Y'all all right? Welcome, brothers and sisters, to <clears throat> Muhammad University of Islam. Welcome to the truth hour. Wanted to add humor because sometimes if truth is driven without mercy, it'll offend. But all I'm saying is, come on, man. You can read the Bible, it's got truth in it, but they done tampered with it. All I'm asking, come on, see, this is what they didn't want Minister Farrakhan getting to you with. The scholars didn't even start running around and trying to change the Bible until the coming of Master Farad Muhammad. Because he came with all truth. He brought things to your remembrance. And he shall lead you into what? All truth. He taught us this. Master Farad Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah. How many of you are here for your very first time? Raise your hand if this is your first time to a nation. All <laughs> praises are due to Allah. All praises due to Allah. How many of you believe what you heard today to be the truth and good for the oppressed? Raise your hand. Oh, that's wonderful. If you believe it to be the truth, and good for the oppressed, give yourself a round of applause for believing that. Beautiful. Testament. Now, if you believe it to be the truth, and good for the oppressed, what you waiting for? How many of you would like to now stand up on that truth and get with the bold and brilliant leadership of my teacher? The Honorable Louis Farrakhan and help us go after our people. How many of you would like to do that? Stand up. You want to learn more? Stand up. Stand up. Ain't no sense in sitting down. Come on and learn more. Come on, brothers and sisters. Learn more about the truth. Who else want to learn more? If you want to learn more, 
and accept this truth. When you bring the brothers and sisters down, bring them down. Bring my brothers, bring my sisters down. Anybody else want to learn more? Come on down. We want to we want to introduce you to your family. Come on if you want to learn more. How will you know except you have a teacher? And how are you going to have a teacher unless he's one of your own? You've been believing everything else. Let us break it down to you a little bit more. And if it gets to a point in your development that you say, look, I like y'all, but I ain't with the nation. You can always, there's no compulsion. You don't have to stick with us. But I believe if you come and learn more, you'll learn more about what we believe. Brothers and sisters, let's give a hand for these wonderful brothers and sisters. Excuse me, soldier. Now, is there anyone else? How many of you would like to come back next week and hear part five? How many of you are coming back next week? Oh, that's beautiful. Look, we're not trying to stop you from being a Christian. Inshallah, we'll make and help you become a better Christian. But I just want the truth. I don't want lies mixed with truth. I want the truth. We need a black interpreter today. Ain't nothing wrong with believing in a black interpreter who God have touched. We don't believe everybody else. We might as well start trusting each other from now. Right? I'm sick of not trusting another black man. But I'll trust a white man. Don't even know nothing about him. He can just come and pat me on the back. And I just believe in you. I don't want that kind of religion. How many of you consider yourself friends of the nation? You're not a member, but you're a friend. Oh, no, y'all put your hand up. Y'all members now. <laughs> Wonderful. We your friend, too. We blood of each other's blood, bone of each other's bone. I don't care if you're black, if you're a brown man, if you're a yellow man or a red man. We are kith and kin. And when we get together and settle our differences and become one, we're going to even reach out for white folks because they are children. I'll teach that another time. Sister, your name? Sister Miko? Wonderful. Brothers and sisters, this is Sister Miko. Do you accept Sister Miko? Yes, sir. Will you teach her everything you know that's good? Yes, sir. Brothers, will you respect her? Yes, sir. Will you help us protect her? Yes, sir. Will you uplift her? Yes, sir. Will you take a life for her? Yes, sir. And if need be, will you give your life for her? Sisters, sisters, do you accept Sister Mika, Miko, the way she is right now? Do you? Well, shout it. Do you? You didn't have to be that loud. Will you help her to become the woman that God would like for her to be? Will each one of you, before you leave, try to introduce yourself to her? Yes, it's going to be some sisters going to be blocking. They're going to want to hold you so long. The other sisters ain't going to be able to get to you. Then if you all would do that, then we welcome Sister Miko to the Nation of Islam and pray that your journey be prosperous. If you would go with her, come on, brothers and sisters, give this black queen a mighty round of applause. How you doing, dear sister? Your name? Sister Therese. Wonderful. Where are you from? Central America, Belize. This is our sister from Central America, Belize. Now, you know, you know, when white folks took us out of Africa, he dropped us off in many places. The Isles of the Pacific, Central and South America. Brothers and sisters, it's close to 100 million black people in Brazil. But they're calling themselves Brazilians. So you don't know they black. Most of you ain't, who ain't never left watch didn't even know it was black folks in Belize. You thought Belize was police. <laughs> right? Sister, you have some home brothers and sisters from Belize that are already members in our mosque. Is that right? Um, your name again? Therese. Brothers and sisters, Sister Therese. Do you accept Sister Therese from Belize? Will you teach her everything you know that's good? 
Will you respect her? Will you help us protect her? Brothers, will you defend her honor? Will you defend her dignity? Will you give your life for her? Will you take a life for her? Sisters, do you accept her the way she is today? Will you help her to become the woman that God, not you, but God would like for her to be? Then, sister, I welcome you home to the nation of Islam. If you would go with that, sister, come on, y'all can do better than that. Sister Tyrese from Belize. Let's give these two mighty black women a rousing round of applause. Allahu Akbar. That means God is the greatest. All praise is due to Allah. Let's give our sisters as a part. Come on, black man. Get a black woman a standing ovation. Give her a standing ovation, black man. All praise is due to Allah. They're coming on home to their religion. Huh? Thank you. Now to the mighty black man. How you doing, my brother? Come on up here with me, man. It's cool. What's your name? Brother Brandon? How old are you, brother Brandon? 15? Wow, 15 years old. This is your nephew? That's brother, who is that? Brother Johnny, one of our top soldiers. Brother Johnny sells about three, four hundred final calls in 30 minutes. I believe you have a pistol on people making them buy them. Final call, partner? Brother Brandon, right? Brothers and sisters, 15 years old. He want to know more about the truth. Huh? He could say, I want to know more about the gangbanging. But the man want to be righteous. He want to give up a rugged lifestyle if that's what he's living. I ask you the question, do you accept Brother Brandon? Will you help us to teach him everything you know that's good? Will you respect him? Will you help us protect him? Brothers, do you all accept him the way he is today? Will you help him to grow into the man that God would like for him to be? If you would do that, then I welcome you, Brother Brandon, to the nation of Islam, all right? Now, thank you. If you would go with that, brother, give Brother Brandon another round of applause. How you doing, my brother? What's your name? Ernest. Brother Ernest. How old are you, Brother Ernest? 19. Brothers and sisters, this is Brother Ernest. I ask you the question. Do you accept Brother Ernest? 19 years old now. I mean, Farrakhan reached down and touched him, don't he? You mad because he want to be with Farrakhan? I mean, Farrakhan has led many of us through the teachings of Elijah out of a decadent lifestyle. Many of us were ex-killers, is that right? Ex-gangbangers. Some of us come out of college. We were just educated fools. Right? With one degree. In a universe that got 360 degrees, a white man gave you one and told you you was intelligent. Is that right? Do you accept my brother? Will you teach him everything you know? Will you respect him? Will you help us protect him? Brother, do y'all accept my brother the way he is today? Will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? And brother, welcome, dear brother, to the nation. And may Allah bless you. If you would go with that, brother. Give that brother another round of applause. How you doing, Top Soldier? Your name? My name is Keith. I was invited by K2. Your name is Brother Keith, and you was invited by, by K2? K2. Brother Kevin, 2X? Oh, wonderful, brother. God has another star in your crown, brother. And this is Brother Keith. Brothers and sisters, do you accept Brother Keith? Will you teach him everything you know that's good? Will you respect him? You accept him the way he is right now? Don't worry about the don't worry about the hair. He's going to bring all the brothers with braided hair to the nation. He's going to be the captain of the braided squad. Nothing wrong with that. We ain't trying to change his hair, dude. We trying to change lies that's been put in his mind. He'll change when he understand. Y'all all right with that? Don't make him let the truth change him. Don't make him no hypocrite. All right? Brother, welcome to the nation of Islam, top soldier. If you would go with that, brother. How you doing, my brother? All right. What's your name? Kenneth. Brother Kenneth? How old are you, brother Kenneth? Fifteen. I mean, this man is tight, too, brother. 
See, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said, Minister Tony, in the West, God have produced some young fearless brothers. He said, them same fearless brothers that black folks and white folks are scared of, God is going to use them because it was Jesus was seen coming at the head of 10,000 fearless ones when the black man in the West is fearless. But Farrakhan got this one. Your name again? Kenneth? Kenneth. Brother Kenneth Stewart. Do you accept Brother Kenneth? Will you teach him everything you know that's good? Will you respect him? Will you help us protect him? You'll do all that? Do you accept him the way he is? He's going to be the lieutenant of the braided hair squad. We accept him just the way he is. Leave him alone. Wait till he grow into an understanding. He'll know what to do. Is that right? Welcome, top soldier, to the nation of Islam. Huh? Who? That's your son? Oh, look at that, man, boy. Go ahead. Father and son, come in nation. How you doing, my brother? What's your name, sir? Brother Keith Tate. Who brought you today, Brother Keith? I, oh, I said I invited him. Man, I forgot. No, I, I this is, this is, uh, wow. This brother... Uh, I went to Mars Brown College and I pledged a fraternity called Omega. You know, Jesus said he's Alpha and Omega. I ain't the Omega part. But this brother pledged the same fraternity that I pledged. And you know, in the chapter, they have to learn the history of all the brothers who came before them. He found out that I pledged the same chapter. He looked me up when he came. He called me. I, I never remember seeing him once at a concert he called me the other day I invited him out he came and my own frat brother has now joined the nation of Islam ain't that something man that's a blessing that's your frat brother right there too Dr. Alonzo Muhammad alright brother Keith do you accept my brother brother Keith right will you help to teach him everything you know that is good? Will you respect my fraternity, brother? Will you? See that brother right there? Brother Steve. Raise your hand, brother Steve. That's an Omega man right there, too. Now, don't y'all, this is just a fraternity thing. I want to, you know, we know we was following Greeks. But where did the Greeks get the letters from? They got them from the black man. Huh? Now, do you accept brother the way he is today? Will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? And let us give him a broader understanding of that alphabet called Omega. Welcome, frat brother, to the nation of Islam. Yeah. Let's give him a round of applause. If you would go with him, that's my fraternity, brother. How you doing there, brother? What's your name, sir? Huh? Brother Ronnie? Wonderful. Face your family. Brothers and sisters, this is Brother Ronnie. Huh? Beautiful brother too. Clean shade. Don't he look good? We kind of look alike too. Do you accept brother Ronnie? Will you teach him everything you know that's good? Do you accept him the way he is right now? Will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? Brother Ronnie, then with that, welcome dear brother. Welcome home, beloved. If you would go with that brother right there. Come on y'all, give brother Ronnie a round of applause. How you doing God? Your name sir? Brother Aaron, wonderful. Where you from, Brother Aaron? You from D.C.? Go ahead. This is our Brother Aaron, right out of Washington, D.C. Huh? He want to be the captain of the dreadlock squad. I mean, it is taught that it's going to be a great but dreadful day. Great for some and dreadful for others. Don't let the dreadlocks fool you. They can be used as a weapon against the white man. Pow! Right in the face. But let our brother get truth. And as he get truth, he'll try to look like the men that he's getting truth from. Let him grow. Do you accept, Brother Aaron? Will you help us to teach him everything you know that's good? Will you be patient with Brother Aaron? Do you accept him the way he is today? Will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? What if Brother Aaron already knows something? Will you listen to him? 
then with that, Brother Aaron, we welcome you, top soldier, to the nation of Islam. If you would go with that, brother, let's give these mighty black men, let's give them all a round of applause. Come on, black man. Get a black man. Give your help a round of applause. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That only means God is the greatest. Brothers and sisters, man, I am fired up. And to the believers, I pray a lot that your spirit is lifted. I pray a lot that you are enjoying this series. This series have now gotten into every city in the western region. And we, I'm telling you, it is as good for us as it is for our Christian brothers and sisters. I thank Allah for using me. I don't know nothing. I'm just a good reciter of another man's wisdom. And I kind of remember some things about what I read. But I am nothing, man. I'm trying to be a good Muslim. I'm trying to be a good brother. But in me is imperfection. But in the teachings of the Honorable Boy Elijah Muhammad, the teachings is perfect, but not the people. So you can't come in the mosque looking at people. Look at what he writes. Look at what he teach. You will find in his teaching, it is perfect. But in those who come to submit to it, we are not perfect. We make mistakes. Some days we mean as hell. Some days we just don't even feel like giving slum like slum like. Some days we may see a newcomer. We won't say nothing to you. Some of us going to look at you like you're aging. 